Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG Freelancer, publisher behind Meliorvia. I am up here today at Immortals Inc. with Mikey. Of course we are. What is up, John? Well, Mikey, I see you're wearing a Marvel shirt. Yes. And stuff I want to talk about brings to mind a different comic book company. Really? Yeah. Which one are we talking? Well, I believe the imprint was probably Mirage or First. I don't remember off the top of my head, but back in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a black and white comic book line that launched an entire series of transmedia events, video games and role-playing games and cartoons and movies. And do you have any idea what I'm talking about? You know what? I'm going to take a hint and say Mutant Year Zero. Well, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <sighs> and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles kind of makes me think a lot of Mutant Year Zero. Spoiled it, guys. I spoiled it. Yep. In fact, there was a supplement for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles called Mutants in Orbit that reminds me an awful lot of this book. And this is Ad Astra for Mutant Year Zero. Nice. Now, League. Mutant Year Zero is a game I've wanted to talk about for a while because I was a big fan of the Ninja Turtles stuff back in the 80s into the early 90s. Um, and this game really brings out a lot of that for me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, creators on this, T Tomas Harnstam is the manager. Jens Alm was the lead writer. Tomas worked on Dragon Bane and a whole lot of other free league products we that we've that talked one. about. Uh, this is the first credit I could find for Jens Alm. Uh, my apologies if I'm missing something else. So Mutant Year Zero, uh, was originally is kind of the descendant of the game Mutant, which was Swedish and was published by the same crew that did Dragon Bane first edition. Nice. It even was originally for Chaosium's uh, basic role play system when that first came out. Oh, okay. Um, and there've been around six ish different iterations of that game line. One of which was Mutant Chronicles that uh, I think we may have touched on at some point in the past. Sounds familiar. There even is a video Let's game. Go from Mutant Year Zero that came out on PlayStation and on Steam, and I think it's still available for both. That's what I saw. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Uh, and this current game line started in 2014 with Mutant Year Zero, and it's actually, I think, the first game where Free League premiered their system because I believe they call it the Year Zero system. Wow, okay. Yeah, so it's about mutant animals, and other survivors, including robots and some unmutated people after a big apocalypse. There have been expansions for playing robots. There have been expansions for playing healthy humans. And there have been expansions with additional mutant animals beyond those that were in the initial book. Um, this one is about putting them in space. As simple as that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> kind of a cool idea. It is specifically intended to be a campaign so that I don't immediately get into spoilers. I'm going to jump to the back of the book first, right? So chapter seven is a new rule section. So say you just want to take your existing characters into space and you don't want to run through this campaign. It is a pretty cool campaign, but we'll come back to that. Uh, it's got rules for what happens when gravity changes or like not having any <laughs> uh, and what happens when atmosphere changes like not having any, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Uh, it introduces a new profession, the pilot. And then it talks about skills, both from the core rules and from some of the other expansions, as well as talents and powers and how those are going to factor into things when your characters are out in space. Conveniently, there's material on spaceships, spaceship battles, because once you got spaceships, you got to start shooting yeah. at each I other, mean, right? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a given. Them, destroy them, salvage yeah. them. A whole section on random events, both when you're traveling in a spaceship or when you're on a space station, because different things can happen in both of those places, and the obligatory gear section. Those new rules are about 24 pages of this book. Uh, after that, there is kind of a world building background info section. It's only about seven pages, but it's an overview of the solar system. And you do have groups living on Mercury, Venus, up on space stations in Earth orbit, on Mars, on the moon, in the asteroid belt, on Jupiter, on Titan. Well, I shouldn't say on Jupiter, on some of Jupiter's moons. 
and on Titan around Saturn. So there's a lot of different places that the characters can go explore. However, it's kind of condensed. It's really only seven pages. The stuff that's most detailed is in the adventure material. So some of those sections that are described in the solar system are also sections that are covered in the course of the adventures. So I mentioned that I was starting off with chapter seven and eight. Chapter one is basically an overview of the campaign and kind of tells you what else is in the book. And at this point, we're going to kind of get into the spoilery material. So if you're planning on playing this campaign, probably want to tune out now. Pause. It is a campaign specifically for exploring the solar system. You're given a whole lot of jumping off points. Uh, the authors wanted you to be able to use this if you had characters that had played through the adventures in the core rulebook or any of the different expansions. But the gist of it is it starts off when the characters reach a space station, Jotunheim, uh, in near-Earth orbit. So it kind of assumes that either at the end of the last adventure or sometime shortly thereafter, the characters found a reasonably functional rocket ship and launched themselves into orbit with it. Um, and that decaying space station, like I said, is called Jotunheim. And it's not just physically decaying, as in falling apart, but it's also got a decaying orbit. And there is an important piece of equipment called the core engine that the characters need to recover in order to restore its orbit. And they have reason to believe that that engine is on Jupiter, or rather at a space station near Jupiter. Uh, so... The first act is the characters trying to get a spaceship ready to make that trip to Jupiter because they're trying to basically recover a bounty. The ship's kind of a wreck, and while the characters are working on that, Jotunheim gets attacked by space pirates. Great. Yep. Yep. A and lot or a crew. Okay. Enough that it's enough opposition where it's like, okay, for a we team got of something characters going on. plus other people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that basically concludes the adventure with the assumption that the characters are going to have a working spaceship at the end of that their time on Jotunheim. But they don't really have a whole lot of fuel for it. So if they want to make it all the way to Jupiter and maybe make some stops on the way, they need to get some fuel. Most likely place to do that is on Earth's moon, Luna. Uh, and there's a chapter there called, this, uh, called Selene, which is the name of a mining field on Luna where they can get some of the hydrogen three which is the preferred energy apparently for spaceships in mutant year zero were you i mean were you able to say that you could get the fuel from the pirate cruise ships that infiltrated you i don't think they had enough to yeah. be traveling in, yeah. in uh interplanetary distances yeah, i mean they're pirates after all so yeah they're kind of desperate they're living on the edge you got it every day uh so they need to refuel the ship and when they get to Luna, they find out that Luna is occupied by a robot empire, <laughs> complete with a artificial intelligence robot mastermind behind it. And he has de decided that there can be no living beings on Luna. Uh, the catch is that about half of his robots are actually mutants wearing robot shells around them. And so you actually have this resistance within the robot empire that's building up to try and overthrow it. Well, <laughs> the characters don't really have the money to pay for the fuel that they need. So they can either side with the empire and put down the resistance or side with the resistance and overthrow the empire. And either way, um, through the course of those interactions and their choices, they can probably get the winning group to say, yeah, yeah, take your fuel, get out of here, kids. Uh, Big decision. After that, they're probably either going to go to Mars in pursuit of this guy that's got the bounty on his head, or they might go to a space station in the asteroid belt where they've got a lead that the artifact they need to recover actually is. Either way, uh, they can be played in either order. If they don't have enough fuel, things are going to get pretty tight for them on this way. Uh, on Mars, there's a space train. Do you remember when we talked about uh, Android? We talked about that train that could, the elevator that could take you up into orbit and back down. Yes. That's basically what they got going on here on Mars. So there's a train that'll take you up to Mars orbit, and that's where your ship's going to dock because presumably this ship you have can't actually land on Mars' surface, oh, right? So it it can't handle traveling station. through an atmosphere. Exactly. So there's all kinds of stuff that can happen aboard this space train. Um, and then they can, uh, 
try to recover these circuits or try and find the guy who knows where the circuits are so that they can go to Jupiter to try and negotiate for that engine. But the guy who knows where the circuits are actually left them on this space station in the asteroid belt. And so that's the other adventure here. Again, this could be played in either order. That space station is mostly abandoned. There's one robot standing guard on the outside of it. And he's standing guard because he was told to stand guard there. And it's been on the order of a couple hundred years standing <laughs> out there to protect his ship. Uh, but inside the space station, all the robots that went in with him or that came with him went in to attack it and they all died. And all the other, almost all the other mutants that were on the space station died too. And all that's left are <laughs> these mutant octopi who are able to survive in, in a vacuum and are also telepathic. Okay. Yeah, kind of a little Cthulhu going on here, I got to say. I mean, that's pretty disheartening. Yeah. And you uh, basically have the opportunity to recover the memory chips of this program that the characters need to get. And it's the big thing that the bounty is for. And you may find out at this point that that memory chips that they're looking for are actually the brains of the evil robot that's running this mining platform on Jupiter where they're trying to get to anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it, it gets crazier and crazier. Uh, and then finally, the big conclusion adventure to this campaign is when they get to Jupiter and go to the mining platform and they find out that there is this robot, or AI rather, called Odin that's setting up, that's building a spaceship for interstellar travel. And it's got around a dozen scientists that have been frozen in cryogenic sleep and they're pure strain humans, so they're not mutants at all. And it wants to launch them on this ship that it's been working on building to Proxima Centauri to establish a whole new human civilization. Good luck. The characters, yeah, well, the characters can, you know, work with that or maybe try and defeat it or try and recover these cryogenically preserved scientists. But the important part is they can try and get the core engine, which is now being used for stabilization here and bring it back to Jotunheim to try and fix the space station. Lots of stuff going on here. They might steal the engine. They might steal the spaceship. There's some really fanatics here that are fiercely devoted to this AI and believe it's a God. A lot of cool options. I think it could be a really fun campaign. A lot of stuff for characters to explore and mutant animals. Yeah. A lot to be said for anthropomorphic mutant animals. Yeah. Uh, if any of that's up your boat or up your alley, uh, stop in, take a look at it. We got it on the shelf here at Immortals Inc. or just hit us up at immortalsinc.com. Well said, John. A whole lot of mutant stuff going on. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, folks. Good gaming. <laughs>